Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today's journey will be through one of the longest unwritten chapters in American history. So, and that is the Trail of Tears, where and about the indigenous people and the enslaved black people come together. But before we get into that, I want you, I want to introduce my very special guest. And those of you that have been with me know I only talk to very special people. This one is more than just special. She is my cousin, another cousin, and she is Darthula. Don't you love that? Darthula uh, Hood Harris. And she is, uh, I'd like to say this, she is the prize of World War II. She is what, is, what came out of World War II as something very special. So, good morning, sweetheart. Good or morning. afternoon in your time. Afternoon well, in your evening. time. It's, it's evening. evening. It's evening. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for being willing to take the time to talk to us today. You're welcome. So tell me, before we get into the Trail of Tears, tell me about being the prize, at least that's the way I wrote it, the prize of World War II. Why? How did that happen? Um, my father, which is your uncle, the oldest of the Hood clan, uh, was stationed in Japan. And he met my mother, which is Japanese, uh, and they got married in Camp Kifu. And then she immigrated to the United States through San Francisco. And from there, um, she was able to uh, move on the base, which was Fort Hamilton base in Brooklyn, New York. And there about a year or two later, my brother was born, then I was born, and then my sister was born. So in your eyes, <laughs> I am the prize. You are the prize, yes. Um, yes. Some people may agree with you in a different way because I do a lot of community um, advocacy for our community. And that's nothing new to us because of our grandmother on uh, your father's side and on my father's side, uh, Daisy Ernestine Hood. She was a little woman, just like on a petite little woman, <laughs> as my granddaughter, my Zion granddaughter would say. You know, your petite grandmother and uh, our grandmother was also a very petite um, but a very strong woman that taught us the importance of community. So yes, my father and mother married in Japan and then she immigrated into the United States and became a US citizen. Um, so she was one of those that had to go through a lot because when you come through, uh, especially at that time, because she was Japanese, and they considered the Japanese uh, enemies at that time. So it wasn't very easy for her. Nevertheless, coming back into a society where well, we were called Negroes then, were looked down upon. So it was really hard for her, but she made it through, had us wonderful three little children, <laughs> three little ones, as they used to call us. Well, now, uh Tell us about the quilt behind you. The I've been quilt. staring at it and staring at it. So tell me about the quilt. The quilt behind us was created by our aunt, Daisy Estelle Hood Anderson. But we always called her Aunt Estelle. And she loved to quilt. This one is the family quilt. It has all of, starts with her mother and her father, her brothers, her sisters, and all of the all of us. <laughs> yes, all of us. She has the date of, of the year that they were born and the year that they died. And for us, she was the last living aunt um, or uncle, 
you know, from uh, yeah, the last of, yes, and, and that was just last year. One. Yeah, she died yes. in um, uh, July of 2019, and we had a memorial for her in Buffalo, New York in um, December. And so it was very touching because she also was very involved in the community. And I mean, not just in her younger years or middle years, she was active in her 90s. And in fact, maybe a year or two before, our Roker came and uh, surprised her on the NBC's morning show um, for her contributions because she was chosen as the volunteer of the whole year for the whole Catholic diocese in the whole United States of America. And so it was just exciting. And she was just running up the stairs, this, you know, 94 year old, just running up the stairs and all this just energy. So it, it was really exciting to see that. Um, so that's the kind of family we're from because you're very active in Hawaii too. Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> but you know, anyway. Uh, now, the reason we're going to talk about the Trail of Tears, which, you know, our conversation doesn't sound like we're going to the Trail of Tears. However, one of our great, great, great grandmothers and Jess, Jess Crawford, which is a strange name for an Indian, was on the Trail of Tears. And along which was horrible the trail of tears was absolutely horrible and that whole issue of the trail of tears and the come coming together of the enslaved blacks well for us it was our family was a freed blacks that took her in from the trail of tears at least that's what your your father told me so that is so, correct. So tell us, tell us about. First, let me say that her father was the oldest of the hoods, and my father was his brother, his big brother, even though he was younger. <laughs> but the physically, he was the big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a close knit family, eight children, eight siblings. Yes. And they were all so very close. So, uh, and Uncle Ernest to me was so special because he told me stories. And everybody said, don't pay attention to Uncle Ernest. He, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. But I loved his stories, especially the one about our great great grandmother, Jess, because she had hiding places, or at least that's what he told me. And being the first grandson or great grand. He loved her and loved being with her. So tell me, tell us about it. <laughs> yes, Your he father. loved his great grandfather, Nicholas Hood, the first, and um, great grandmother, Louisa. And uh, his aunt at that time would be aunt, our great aunt, Ruth. Um, and there was a time that they put his best clothes on, as my father would tell the story. And they told him to, he knew where to hide. He knew where to hide because there will be people or men looking for him. And what it was is because he was the firstborn of um, a family that came from um, Indian chiefs. And at that time, on the books, they still had where you could scalp and get money for the scalp. And so they sent my father to hide. And he knew the warehouse, and he would see him, but they couldn't see him. And he really didn't realize until later on that they were really there to kill him. But they didn't find him, thank God. And when he finally made his way back home, his grandmother and his aunt um, just cried because they were so happy that he made it back home safely and alive. Um, there are a lot of stories that are very sad during that period of time, 
because also it was a period of time when people were mobile and it wasn't that far from when slavery was abolished and he used to raise chickens. And I said, well, daddy, where did you raise all these chickens at? He says, well, people would pack up and just leave their homes and he would raise the chickens in there. And he would sell the eggs just like great grandmother would do. And I was just, you know, you can't phantom in your mind whole cities or towns or communities just empty, just people get up and move. Um, but that was the times, you know, that was the time. And yes, for us, great grandmother, we were told at the time she was a Blackfoot, but in reality, that was to protect her because we found out many years later that she was really Cherokee and grandfather married her and she intertwined in the black community. And a lot of Indians did that. And that is how they survived, you know, a lot. Well, now what I've learned, of course, in, in this whole process is that um, from the time that the Europeans arrived in America, they started enslaving native people. And that was 150 years before um, slavery, from what we call slavery. But they took them the, all up and down the East Coast as these Europeans arrived. They just took these people for house caring and because they knew how to grow things and all of that kind of stuff. 150 years of that. Yeah. Uh, and then as the, the time went on, the newly arrived Blacks uh, did not, um, they you know, said, oh no, we're not going to do slavery. So they intertwined with the um, the indigenous people and they also worked for the Europeans but it, at that time it wasn't slavery it was just housework and carpentry and the things that it takes in those days to build a house to cut the wood to do all of those things that they had to do so there was a lot of intermarriage intertwined in the cultures and of course is learning these languages and all that goes with it. We have uncle, cousin, Carl, gave me this book. Now I was supposed to have it right in front of me. What did I do with it? Okay. Oh, come on, Marcia. Nah. Anyway, I'll find it. Keep talking. <laughs> It is called the Black Indian. The Black Indians, yes. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is, the yes. Black Indians. And that tells the story of all of this that happened the trail before the Trail of Tears. Correct. Right. And for anyone that in this you can get it on Amazon. I'm not I don't make any money on this. <laughs> but it does tell the story of the Lone Ranger was a black man and not this guy you see on television. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this the story of, that we know because she's part of us um, is not unusual. It's not, uh, you know, all of those years from uh, for 400, 400 years of course, there was a lot of intermarriage. Um, and that was survival for both the Native Americans and the uh, African people brought, the people brought from Africa. Just just to survive in a na new world, in a native. And at least the, na the Indians understood the land, knew what the land was, knew how to grow the crops, knew, understood this. So this, um, this our story, of course, because it is our story, uh, I felt we needed to tell it. 
So tell us more about your father and his various stories. Now, let me say this. He told me, he said, you know, it was easier to be black than it was to be Indian. And I thought, okay. And I thought about that. And then I said, well, um, what I do we have a question here? Okay. And so I thought, well, because we have a great, great grandfather who was from India, I assumed that that was what he was talking about was that Indian only to find out it was Native American. So. Which would make sense though, Marsha, because we quote unquote had nothing but the Native Americans, it was their land that they were encroaching upon, stole, uh, and claimed for their own. Mm -hmm. So it was a real threat where um, Blacks were not, um, you know, not to that extent. Um, but for in the very early part and even towards your later 1800s, it was still an issue you know, very big issue. So it did make sense that it was easier to be black because quote unquote, in the Caucasian world, we weren't that much of a threat. But from a Native American point of view, you were because they knew they had certain treaties, they had certain rights. And also this was truly their land, okay? So yes, yeah. From that point of view, or rather my point of view, that's how I look at it. Okay. Well, yes, and they did take it, and we don't have enough time to talk about all of the, the things that happened to the um, indigenous people, not only uh, in across the United States, but they did it here in Hawaii, uh, in Brazil, uh, you name Mexico. it. Mexico, yes, all everywhere that they land, they took the land. Yeah, you know, we are just about out of time. I can't believe it went that fast. Yes, but I am so glad that you came, that you agreed. <laughs> oh, incidentally, she's in Gary, Indiana, which yes, is <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, and yeah. yes, <laughs> and so this is a long way away from us. And I thank you so much for doing this. And um, so we'll have to do it again. Yes, thank you, Marsha. I really enjoy this conversation. And it's something that needed to be told. All of us have a wonderful, rich history. And we just need to talk to our children and our grandchildren so that the stories could continue. It's very important. Very. <laughs> well. And about your quilt in the background, yes. since I'm the, I'm the oldest of all of the grandchildren, yes. thank you're God my, my ending date isn't on there. No, it's not. And neither is my thank goodness. <laughs> there are a lot of Nicholases. There are a lot of Ernestes. There are a lot there. Two Dorothulas because uh, we had Aunt Dorothula, which was right. also known as Dolly. And I'm fourth generation because Aunt Dolly was named after her aunt and her aunt was named after her aunt. And it goes back to grandmother's side of the family. Her father had a sister by the name of Dorothula. Then he named his daughter Dorothula. And then Aunt grandmother had her daughter and named her Dorothula. And when I came, I got named Dorothula. And I believe our time is almost up. Yeah, my, um, my father, of course, was Marshall. And I have another cousin who was, we had the same name at the same time, Marsha Hood. And um, then there's a lot of Marshalls, lots of Marshalls. So they keep passing these names down around. But I thank you again. I'm getting, we are out of time. And I am so delighted to, to talk to you, to see you in person since we talk a lot <laughs> and uh, we will see everybody again 
next time. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha.